All right, now we're joined by Councilman Mike O'Brien, who's going to be uh, presenting for the Yes on Proposition 1 Metro Funding Campaign. So go ahead with up to five minutes introduction. Great, good. Um, you know, the first thing I guess I want to say is that we shouldn't be having this conversation right now. Um, the idea that the fastest growing city in the country right now, Seattle, um, with a transit system that um, we all want to see better and bigger, is actually having to have discussions about cutting jack transit service is just extremely disturbing. Um, and yet here we are. Um, I, very disappointed that the state legislature has not come up with better sources for transit funding over the years. It's a battle that a number of us have been working on for feels like eternity. And um, we'll have another shot this year, but frankly, I don't have a lot of optimism that in the near future we're going to see new transit funding sources out of the way. Um, also, was disappointed to see uh, the failure of Proposition 1 in April countywide. Um, Particularly that, that um, outside of Seattle, I believe that Lake Forest Park was the only other jurisdiction where it had a yes vote on it. Um, when I think in Seattle, at least we all know that the region is heavily dependent on transit. But it was encouraging to see that, that within the city limits, uh, this me that measure passed two to one, even though it was a low turnout election. And um, we know how those can skew more conservatively often. So. Um, so here we are, we have a chance through the Seattle's Transportation Benefit District, which uh, as a city council member we sit on as uh, board members, um, to come up with a almost identical funding stream that the county would back um, for city. And um, it's not ideal, it's not perfect to be funding a regional transit system at a city level, uh, but it's the best thing we can do right now. Frankly, it's, um, it's one of the few things we have a shot at. Um, so what does this do? Proposition 1 from the Transportation Benefit District um, would raise about $45 million a year, uh, and it would be a six-year uh, initiative uh, from 2015 to 2021. Uh, it would get that $45 million in roughly equal parts from a $60 vehicle license fee and from a, a one-tenth of one percent increase in the sales tax. Um, the $45 million would be dedicated largely to restoring uh, or preserving uh, existing bus service uh, within the city of Seattle. The, um, there are is $3 million, up to $3 million could be set aside to partner with other jurisdictions if adjoining um, municipalities or other entities came together to provide funding and we could partner with them to restore bus service that largely operates across city lines. Um, up to $2 million will be set aside for the uh, low income rebate program for the vehicle license fee. Um, this is something that uh, Senator David Frock worked on few years ago so that um, we could give up to a $20 rebate to low-income families to 200% of their property level, I believe. And um, up to $2 million is set aside for us to administer the low-income fare that the county is going to initiate uh, next winter when they do the fare increases. And so up to $2 million will be spent um, doing the type of um, outreach and connecting with low-income communities and low-income individuals to make sure that those folks that are eligible for the low-income fare have the proper order uh, I want to just mention that there's so many things we're doing right in Seattle right now. The recent uh, Seattle traffic report came out and said um, in the last 10 years, population in Seattle is up 11%. Traffic on city streets is actually down 10%. And uh, transit ridership is up 40%. And when you care about the things I care about, a lot about climate change, a lot about um, how cities are the answers to a lot of um, the world's problems, that tells me, wow, it's actually working. But the feeling on the street is different. Um, I know people say it doesn't feel like there's less traffic. It feels more congested. There's a lot of projects going on right now in our city that helps add to that. It also doesn't feel like transit is meeting our needs. Um, the rapid ride C line, I'm sorry, the D line, which was um, less than two years old, uh, has seen a 40% increase in ridership in that two years over the routes it replaced. And it's frustrating people because the buses are full and passing by. But we need to be investing in transit right now. We need to preserve our existing service, and then we need to come back and figure out how we can expand the service that we really want and I think deserve as a region. Great. Thank you. So now we'll uh, do follow-up questions. These are two-minute answers. Um, I have one. Um, so I think that the first 
question that people ask sort of in the first instance is like, oh, if we put this money into Metro, what's going to stop um, King County Metro from just putting all their money into other jurisdictions? I understand there are protections to avoid that, so I was wondering if you could just sort of describe how do we avoid just sort of subsidizing the county? Sure. So um, the city and the county have been working closely on this, which has been really great. Um, you know, there have been discussions about whether the Seattle should do its own thing on transit for a long time. And I can tell you leadership at the city was working very closely. I personally worked very hard on the campaign in April to try to get a county-wide package. And when that failed, the leaders of the county said, look, we don't want Seattle to go by themselves, but we don't see any other way. And the last thing we want to see is that's happening. And so we've been working very collaboratively, um, working on an MOU. I don't know how long that will take to come out. Um, but to, to find it clearly that there will be no subplanting of existing routes with the Seattle line. And so the concern is a real one. Um, obviously, you know, it's a great thing that everyone in the region, a lot of the people at least, want more transit. Um, but Seattle is funding this and needs the the funding needs to stay in the state, with the exception of the three million, up to $3 million for partnerships, which would be being matched by other jurisdictions. So um, we believe we have the language there to move, and leadership of the county is going to work for us to make sure that does not happen. Yeah. Um, you said that the, um, the funding is almost identical, and I, I know you're going to get criticized for it being a non-progressive tax, yeah. so yes, tax part of it at least. So I'm hoping to hear that the changes were to make it more progressive, but what exactly were the changes? The changes were, um, the changes are more timing um, and the duration of it. So the, the issue around progressive um, and regressivity of this tax form, um, nothing really changed that. And you know, I'll tell you, um, we had some, some really good discussions, and a couple of the council members really led the charge on finding some other solutions. Um, I believe that, I don't have a lot of faith in the state legislature in helping us in public transit in the next few years. And I think we're gonna need to use all the revenue sources that are currently available to the city and the county if we wanna get the transit source, the transit that we need, which includes some of the more progressive sources that we didn't opt for right now. So that includes the head tax. Um, I think property taxes are an option. Um, bridging the gap would be up for renewal in a year. And so there's an opportunity to do more with that. Um, and so, um, yes, these taxes are not as progressive as we'd like. We do have the rebate fee for the, um, the VLF, which helps. We have instituted and we're gonna put some money into low income fare assistance to make sure people have it. So those are some of the things we're doing to try to address it. Perchance, the, uh, the Senate of the state does be able to pass a transportation bill. Yes. Are we? Are you prepared to have how we would react to that? Would that? Would that? Would that, would that negate what we're doing with the city of Seattle? So we have language in there that anticipates that possibility. Um, we struggle with what um, what exactly that plan might be in a hypothetical situation, either through the county or the state, they might come back. And so the language you put in there um, spells out two kind of clear paths. One would be um, to simply stop collecting the tax. You know, if, if this passes in November, that's the city giving the transportation benefit, the people of the city giving the transportation benefit district board authority to go out and raise those taxes. If something happened, we could actually um, stop collecting it. Alternatively, we could look at other things we should be doing to enhance service. You know, could we add more frequency on like the DR, for instance? <laughs> and so those are the two options that we anticipate. Okay. We didn't spell it out um, explicitly as to what would happen in that because it was hard to tell what, what package might happen and it would be a full restoration or a partial restoration and where would we be. So would this um, expire need to be renewed? From time to time, like a property tax levy would, or what, what's the what, what's the duration of what we're voting for? You know, the the idea behind the six-year term limit, um, uh, trying to address people's concerns that um, ultimately we want the trans the, the transit um, system to be a regional one, which means it needs regional funding, 
and so to not commit ourselves to an indefinite funding stream, um, but also to not something, spend something so short, one or two years, if we realistically didn't think another option might be up by then. So we wanted to give us enough time to actually cover the gap, um, but not set it indefinitely so that folks, you know, other jurisdictions don't say, well, it's not a problem anymore, so yeah, let's fix it. Um, we clearly aren't, you know, we're going to hopefully maintain existing service, which is not sufficient, within the city of Seattle. But there are going to be devastating cuts to populations outside the city, and we're going to need to work with our sister jurisdictions to make sure that we address those in whatever way we can. So is there, um, you know, just from a systemic perspective, you know, one of the complaints is like, oh, we should have sound transit do everything. We don't need all these different layers of bureaucracy and different sub-funding. Is, is there a counter-argument to that other than this is the least bad option? I mean, I vote for least bad options all the time. <laughs> but, you know, um, coordinating transit service is a, probably a bigger discussion than this table, but it gets brought up quite a bit. Um, and uh, Frank McDowell, Constantine, is county executive and chair of the Sound Transit Board, um, is taking advantage of that coordinating opportunity and really initiating what I think is some great work to continue to coordinate and collaborate between those two agencies. Um, there's a ton of collaboration and coordination that already happens. I mean, for one thing, Metro operates the Sound Transit Express buses. Metro operates the light rail system. Um, they, I mean, they, they, they run the trains. Um, and so, Sound Transit is largely a capital building, region-wide, multi-county transit system. And I think it's a good thing that we have a multi-county you know, multi transit system. What I also will say is, within the city of Seattle, clearly our appetite for transit is higher than probably anywhere else in the region. And one of the sacrifices we make in all these different partnerships is we don't get as much transit as we want because we need something that can pass county-wide or region-wide. And so I think there are opportunities that have different segments of that market, but it's critical that they be coordinated. Um, you know, it's nice to have an organ pass that works for everything, as opposed to eight different bus systems that I have to track. And so those types of initiatives, I think, are critically important. But it is, you know, it's, it would be better if the county had passed this initiative on its own. It's a good thing that Seattle has an opportunity to do that, as opposed to just have to face the cuts until we can figure out better. Questions? I've got plenty of wonky questions if you guys don't. Um, in terms of opportunity cost, I know when people talk about um, when you have uh, property tax levies, um, people make an argument like, oh, if you're going to use, you only have so much taxing authority, so you can use it for only certain mm -hmm. things. Um, the $60 car tab fee and 0.1% and sales tax, is that, uh, is that using um, revenue that could only be allotted to certain things, or is it competing with anything else that could be funded? Like, not politically, sure. but are we only authorized 60 bucks in that set yeah. if we're choosing to do it for this, for example? So, so certainly there's the, you know, the public appetite for taxes, and the political question is how much is the public willing to do it? Sure, right. That's always out there. This is specific authority that's granted to transportation benefit districts. Okay. Um, up to two-tenths of a percent of sales tax we could do. Um, and so we're only using part of that. Uh, up to up to hundred dollars for the transportation benefit district, twenty of which is council manic and was implemented a couple of years ago. So this would be another sixty, but there's still twenty left beyond that. Um, what could those funds be used for? Broadly for other transportation initiatives. Um, you know, uh, one of the deals that the county initiative, countywide initiative did, uh, was the same fund taxing source, but about two fifths of the money. 40% would have gone to road, local jurisdictions for road repairs, um, and 60% of that county initiative was going to transit. The Seattle initiative is, is exclusively transit, but we could have used money for roads, we could have used it for bike lanes, we could use it for sidewalks. So um, there are other pressing needs, but you know, I think everyone felt at this time the bus, the, the possible threat of a bus cutback in Seattle was the most pressing need, and let's stay unified around that for now. So we would still have another $20, not that we're looking to levy taxes sure. on people just all willy nilly, but we've got an extra $20 car tab left over and yeah. point one sale. And I think combined that would be about $30 million a year okay. in authority. The, the, the Transportation Benefit District also has some tolling authority, um, pretty hard to implement on a city level. It also has a property tax authority that's exclusive to that. 
Um, but it's a one year, it has to be renewed by the voters every year. Which <laughs> almost, makes it almost more expensive to put it on the ballot than the. Yes. <laughs> Now, now, if the county had passed it in April, is that a separate bucket of taxing authority? Is it is the county its own transportation benefit district, or would this be the county itself? That's a good question. You know, Jeff, I don't know the exact answer. Yes! <laughs> so, well, let me look that up. Um, I've heard both things, that they're independent, um, and I've also heard that they layer on top of each other. Uh, meaning, like, if Seattle, for instance, had passed the transportation benefit district, DLF, the $60, we went to the voters a couple of years ago. That was a, a transit bike road initiative. Um, one of the questions was, could the county have done a $60 in April or not? Top of it. And I've heard, yes, they could, but I've also heard people explain that they, they have to layer up some way. So I don't know that exact number. Other questions about? Stump the council member. I know. <laughs> I have a question. Can't be laid at the doorstep of the Parks Department with the paper. <laughs> <laughs> We've got buses that go from park to park to park to park to park. <laughs> A bus transit system, there we go. There we go. Maybe one more question, if anybody has one. I would say when people don't have questions, it's a good sign for the campaign. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you, you've Talking about transit in 36 is usually a place to be. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> Especially <laughs> when it took me an hour and 20 minutes to get home today. Right. <laughs> my car. Um, so why don't you take up to four minutes to close the statement? You know, I don't have a lot to add other than just to reiterate the conversation that I'd like to be having right now is how do we double our transit service in the next five years? Because um, frankly, when I see a 40% ridership increase in Ballard alone, by simply having a rapid line, ride line, a lot of folks are not that rapid. Um, I know there is a ton of demand out there. And, um, you know, Seattle is different than the suburban jurisdictions. We've evolved beyond transit as a way to get to and from work. And it runs in one direction in the morning and a different direction in the afternoon to where we actually can get around the city somewhat. Um, weekdays, evenings, weekends on a transit system. You know, our neighbors to the south in Pierce County have had devastating cuts where they've lost a lot of that. Um, to the north, they've also had some, some, some similar cutbacks. Um, and I think it's so great that we have this system and we can do so much more with it. And we need to pass this in November. This is a critical vote. So many people are transit dependent either because their financial situation is they don't have a choice or they're choosing a lifestyle to make themselves transit dependent. And for both those folks, I want to serve them. Um, but after we pass this in November, we need to figure out how to come back and continue to expand the transit system because that's the conversation that puts a smile on my face and gets me this is a step in that direction. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.